I'm very pleased to now welcome to my virtual stage Indira Veer Singh, founder and CEO of Evage, and Rajender Petkar, the CTO of Tata Motors. Welcome to you both. Thanks so much for coming along. Thank you. So let's start with Rajendar. What do you think the future of hydrogen is as a source of fuel in the mobility business? Yeah, so there are two zero emission technologies when it comes to uh, mobility. I'm talking here about the transport sector. One is the pure battery electric vehicles. Uh, and they are very famous as far as the passenger vehicle applications are concerned or the small commercial vehicles. As far as the heavy commercial vehicles are concerned, they would uh, go in the direction of uh, use of the fuel cell, which is powered by the hydrogen as a fuel. So these two are the two distinct uh, trends that we are able to see as of now. And uh, hydrogen certainly holds the promise as far as the heavy commercial vehicles are concerned. How do we make sure that it's green hydrogen? Just a follow up question. Yeah, so green hydrogen is going to be important from the point of view of that, you know, if the grid is not green, then overall we don't achieve the targets as far as the sustainability is concerned. So therefore, uh, the green hydrogen, which could be obtained through the electrolysis of the water is something that is uh, going to be important uh, from the point of view of achieving the green mobility. Uh, as we go in the future, uh, it's going to be very clear and a sort of a mandate from the governments also to look at how to generate uh, the green hydrogen on the mass scale. Thank you. So, India, let's let's bring you in. First of all, can you tell me what Evage does and how you're disrupting the mobility market? Yeah, thanks. Good afternoon. We at Evage are developing first of its kind uh, exoskeletons, which are used for making uh, electric delivery vans and similar urban transit vehicles. We are the first few people out, out of the blocks trying to create battery powered four wheelers in India in terms of uh, delivery vans. And how are you doing that? Why is it so, why is it so different? Because first of all, uh, you know, electrification in the developing world needs a different mindset to do it. The affordability of electric vehicles is a big challenge. And that's the problem we are sort of solving right now uh, for India and the developing world at large. So Rajendra, let's come back to you. We know that Tata Motor has really been a front runner in terms of introduction of electric vehicles in India. So tell me what you think has, has made this easier, but where are the really big challenges? Yeah, so if we look at the electric vehicles, uh, they suffer from the number of disadvantages. And uh, some of them are like they suffer from the having the adequate range, uh, the infrastructure for the charging, the high cost of the electric vehicle, of the credible options as far as the customers are concerned. So in Tata Motors, we actually decided to look at uh, the e-mobility in a very holistic way and decided to work uh, on the complete ecosystem whereby each of the challenges of the electrification, they get addressed. Uh, and then we look at which are the Tata Group companies which can actually come together to support uh, the electrification. So under the brand of uh, Tata Universe, uh, there are group companies uh, who have been participating in creating and helping the ecosystem to get developed uh, as, as, as the nation goes toward the e-mobility direction. So Tata Motors, uh, as far as the vehicles manufacturing is concerned, Tata Power, as far as the charging infrastructure is concerned, Tata Capital and Tata Finance in respect of supporting the finance needs for the electric vehicles and uh, Tata Autocom uh, for the development of the aggregates which go into the powertrain of the electric vehicles. So we took a complete ecosystem view of uh, the EV system and uh, that's how it has actually helped us. And while as far as the Indian market is concerned, it is still quite at a nascent stage. But the kind of uh, the progress that has been made in the last uh, two to three years is uh, quite phenomenal. And uh, in terms of the Tata Motors products, we are actually the market leader when it comes to the electric vehicle passenger cars, where we hold upwards of 70% of a market share already. 
Indivere, can you talk to me about the commercial electric vehicle market? I know that's a key focus for you. And I'd love you to hear more about some of the innovations and how fast you'll, you think we'll see some of these commercial uh, electric vehicles hitting the road. Right. So uh, the commercial vehicles are divided into two uh, particular segments. The first one is the long haul, which would transit from one major city to another city. And then we have the urban transit vehicles, which primarily look at the last mile or mid mile operations within this within the urban environment. So our thinking is that the urban transit vehicles are the first that will electrify for various reasons. A, the, the range that they need per day is limited, whereas a long haul vehicle would need a longer sort of a range uh, to be traveled in a single day. And the infrastructure for charging is easier to map out in the city vis-a-vis -vis over a longer highway. So we strongly believe that uh, electrification in vehicles is going to happen in the urban transit vehicles, and that's what we are making, uh, the, our electric delivery vans. And also we believe that there is a need to innovate in the way we manufacture these vehicles so that they are more affordable and purpose-built to meet different challenges from a vehicle. So we have created this uh, exoskeleton structure, which is ultra modular in nature, can be uh, manufactured in small micro factories, so as to speak, or micro manufacturing, which would help us decentralize manufacturing, be closer to the customers. And as a customer or a fleet operator, you can imagine going to an IKEA of cars and get a customized vehicle designed and built for your purpose built application. And that's what we are doing at EBH. So I wonder how you both see the world of mobility in 10 years, Rajendar. Yeah, so the mobility industry has been under huge uh, disruption in the recent few years. And uh, the trend will further go for the next 10 years or even beyond that. Uh, Talking about the automobiles, we clearly see that uh, there is a focus going to be on the five zeros, what we call them as. The first zero is related to the zero impact on the environment, which means that uh, there should be no tailpipe emissions. And that goes uh, very well as far as the sustainability is concerned. The second zero gets related to the zero fatalities, which means there is going to be a great focus as far as the safety aspect is concerned, the safety of the occupants inside the vehicle, and also the safety of the, uh, the road users. The third gets related to the zero waste, where uh, it again talks about the circular economy, and uh, there the focus is the RCRs, that is reuse, recycle, and the recover. And uh, something which will happen progressively uh, in the next uh, few years. The fourth zero gets uh, related to the zero left out. That means the way that you will make the mobility solution is something which is going to be accessible and applicable to all sections of the society, whether it's the old people or whether it's the young ones, whether it's a disabled one, there will be equal right uh, for the use of uh, the vehicles by all the sections of the society. And the last zero gets related to the zero stress, which means that uh, you will actually create an automobile vehicle you know which goes to something called as the level five of autonomy which is a driverless vehicle so ease of driving the comfort uh, uh, is something which is uh, also a direction as a part of this uh, next 10 year agenda so these are the five zeros where the automobile industry is currently focusing on and the disruption is going to come in each of these areas uh, in the next 10 years very comprehensive. I wonder, uh, Indivir, have you got anything to add? Yes, I do. We believe that urbanization is one trend which is only going to intensify in the next decade. The density of people living in cities is going to increase. Now, which would need a different kind of a mobility system. And, and cities will be built around people rather than around cars. It's a challenging time for the automobile industry and as well as a huge opportunity. The form factors of vehicles would change. They would become ultra small, ultra efficient, 
perhaps shared and also mostly urban transit vehicles. So that's what the future augurs for vehicles. It's just not about being ice, uh, ice engine powered or electric vehicles. It's more about the whole comprehensive solution we provide to the user. Thank you so much for joining me here at the India Global Forum for this conversation about the future of electric mobility. Indavir Singh and Rajendra Petkar, thank you very much for being with us.